Okay, grade nine, today we're gonna to go over the periodic table and we're just gonna go through all of the different parts of it. So to start out, we're gonna just go through how all of it is set up. So some of the distinguishing features would be this beautiful staircase over here. And I'm just gonna use a highlighter to make this stand out. Now for you guys to do this along with me, um, you're gonna need some colors. I don't know how many, probably like if you had 12 colors, that'd be more than enough. Um, I wanted the highlighter just because it'll make that part stand out and then maybe a pen or a pencil to add in some details as we go. So we want to look today at the different families, the different groups, the different periods so that you know what all the parts of the periodic table are. So we're going to start out with giving you some basic details about the periodic table so that you know where everything is and where it goes. So to start, we have our groups. So our groups go down. They're the columns. And our groups have the similar reactivity in them as you go down. So they'll react to things in a similar way, but with varying degrees of reactivity. So as you go down, for example, group one, it gets more and more reactive and the most reactive metal is actually this one here at the bottom, francium. And if you go over here to our non-metals, we would actually have the reactivity increasing as we go up the scale, but all are up our row. But we have all of these interacting in the rows in the same type of way. So the chemistry of the rows, or sorry, the chemistry of the groups are very similar. Then we have our rows, which are called periods. And they go this direction. Oh, I guess they could go both ways, up and down back and forth. So here we could just quickly label, we already have lovely labels here for our groups, but for our periods, we could add those in. So they go down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now here's the trick. Can you see that these are coming down like this? That's because this entire row right here fits right there. And this entire row here fits right here. So these are called the lanthanide and the actinide series. And the reason why they're down underneath the periodic table is because they wanted our periodic table to fit on one sheet of paper. And it just couldn't because it was way too long because these the chemistry of these uh, elements fit right into here. So they just kind of cut them out and put them underneath. So this is still in period six and this is still in period seven. So they're a little bit tricky. We don't have groups for these ones and that's okay. We don't actually deal with these ones a lot in grade nine and that's okay. Our main goal is to get up to this one right here, which is 18. So in grade nine, you need to understand the Bohr diagrams to 18. After that, you do need to know how to name them and how they interact, but you don't need to know all of their intricate chemistries. So let's just break this up into things that you already know looking at the periodic table and what we've already done in class. So you should know that on the left of the periodic table, all of this side, all over here, these are our metals. And to the right of our periodic table are our nonmetals. So we already know that our metals can be ductile, can have luster, can be malleable, they can um, be stretched into wires, and they can be shiny and conduct electricity and conduct heat all over here. 
The non-metals, on the other hand, they don't do those things quite as well. So they're going to be dull. Um, they're going to be brittle. They are going to not conduct heat and electricity quite as nicely. So around our period, or sorry, around our staircase that breaks them up, we have a few that are our metalloids. And we talked about these already. So I'm just gonna color these in and I'm using pencil crayon because I tried with felt already and it didn't work very well because then I couldn't read my periodic table. So our metalloids hug the periodic table. So we're gonna have them here. And knowing that they have the periodic table for grade nine is probably enough. And you need to know that they have some properties of metals and non-metals. And to be honest, when it comes down to these ones, I actually don't know if these ones are uh, metals or non-metals. And so I'm not even, oh, I think acetine is. I think this one is. But I'm not gonna color the other one. And that's okay, because we don't need to know all of that in grade nine. So I'm just gonna draw a little arrow using the same color. And I'm gonna bring it up quite high we're gonna have a lot more information on here. I'm gonna write metalloids. I think there's two L's, metalloids. Okay, so those are our metalloids here hugging the periodic table. Now, the next one that we're gonna do is, I'm gonna use an ugly dark brown, and I'm gonna color in our hydrogen because hydrogen is kind of all on its own. And you'll notice on this periodic table, it's in both group one and group 17. And that's because hydrogen has its own chemistry because it only has one electron. It can act like it's in two different groups. So it's here and here, it's on its own. Then we're gonna do um, group one. So a lot of our chem chemical families stay in the groups. So we're gonna have our group one that's right here. So it's gonna start at lithium and it's gonna go down to francium. Now, inside of our groups on the metals, we actually get more and more reactive as we go down a column. So the most reactive is gonna be francium. So what I'm gonna do for that is I'm gonna to try to color this darker um, so that you can tell that it's more reactive and then kind of lighten it up so that the top up here is quite light and then getting darker as we go. I'm not very good at shading so this may not be the best way for me to depict this because I'm really not very good at it but you can kind of get what I'm trying to do here is that there's a gradient as you go down. So group one, I'm just trying to think of the best place for me to write this. Group one is called the alkali metals. And I will have these all typed out for you as well so that you can read them better in case you can't read my writing because you haven't had to do that all year. And I'm gonna put a little note down under here that says francium is the most reactive metal and I'm going to write reactivity for metals increases as you go down the, I, can't, I don't even know if you can see that, down the group. Okay, I'm just gonna check and make sure you can see that. Nope, you go down the group, there we go. Okay, so that is our first chemical family. The next one over, I'm gonna use a different color of, I'm gonna go a totally, eh, I'm gonna use a different color of green. I seem to have a lot of green, potentially, because it's my favorite color. But, um, 
yeah, I'm going to use a different, because also alkali, the alkali metals. And then the next one's called the alkali earth metals. So I want it to look different, but mm, no, that one's too close. We're going to go here. We'll use this weird bronze yellow. It's kind of earthy. So again, we're going to color this column and all of them you could do if you're good at the gradient here. I don't know if I can keep that up. I feel like that might be hard for me. So in this one, radium would be the next. And then well, kind of I'm pretty, I'm pretty proud of that, actually. So this column here, I'm going to use my um, I don't know, I'll stick with the color. And I'll write up here that these are called the alkali, alkaline, they end in, this is a K-A-L-I-N-E, earth metals. Like I said, I'll have this written out so that you can see it a little bit better. So alkali metals, group one, group two, alkaline earth metals. Then we get into this section right here, which is your transition metals. So for my transition metals, I'm just gonna take a red and I'm just gonna color these in. And it's still true, they still get darker as you go down. And I might fix that up a little bit later, but just to sort of have this whole area in here colored. Now, there is a whole section that will say that these are just called the metals, the other metals, because they're not quite transition metals. If on a test in grade nine, you called them transition metals, I would not be upset. These are just kind of other metals here. So this whole section in here, these are called transition metals. Okay, so these ones down here, because they fit inside of here, they are also all transition metals, all of these down here. Okay, so those are all of your transition metals. Then you've got your non-metals. What color should we use? What's this color here? Turquoise. Is that different enough from this blue? Maybe not. Maybe we should use a darker one. Neon blue. Doesn't look very neon to me. So neon blue would go here. Well, actually let's use neon blue here. So our group 17 is going to be our first row of non-metals. And so we're gonna go up. Oh, this is not a good color. I'm gonna use pink, it's different. So we're gonna go up here. The difference is, is that here we want our intensity at the top. So color the darkest one at the top because fluorine is the most reactive non-metal. And then we'll go down here. So these ones in group 17 are called our halogens. H-A-L, oh, I don't know if you can see that, H-A-L-O-G-E-N-S, the halogens. And we're going to, again, take a little note here and we're gonna point at our fluorine. We're gonna say fluorine is the most reactive, non-metal and we also want to say reactivity where can we put that that's a little bit less in the way can I, i'm going to add it down here at the bottom so i'm going to put over here reactivity for non-metals increases as you 
go up a group. So that you can see that. All right, my red is very similar to the pink. Honestly, people, I tried really hard. It doesn't maybe look like it, but I did. So I'm gonna use purple. And so this is gonna be our non-metals in here. And we're gonna color these ones in here. And we'll bring this up here and say non-metals non-metals and last but not least we have our I'm just looking for a good color here clearly I don't have a lot of good colors um last but not least maybe we'll try this turquoise we've got our noble gases so this is group 18 and they're just going to be lightly shaded over here and these are our noble gases. Now our noble gases are very important because they have full valence electrons. So we're gonna go through that in just a minute. But this is how you'd color your periodic table so that you're showing all of your groups, um, your periods, your chemical families, your reactivity, we have a lot of information already on this periodic table. So we are going to leave this one as it is. And then we are going to take another one and show you how you can tell how all of them react together.